15.2 Simplifying Radicals. What is the value of the square root of 25? Well, remember we said a perfect square is any number that we can get by multiplying another number times itself. So the square root of 25 would be 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. Now, what happens if we don't have a perfect square? Like, for example, if we were trying to find the square root of 24. Because 24 is not a perfect square, to find the approximate value, you can use a calculator and you would get this, 4.898974, and it would keep going because it's an irrational number. A better way to represent the square root of 24 is to simplify the square root, which means that we have to factor. To factor, you have to use a number that's a perfect square for square roots and a perfect cube for cube roots. So, for example, if we were trying to, to simplify the square root of 24, we would find the biggest perfect square that divides into 24, and that would be 4. 4 times 6 is 24, and since 4 is a perfect square, we can take the square root of that, and that's 2. So it gets to come out of the radical. But since the 6 is not a perfect square and it doesn't have any perfect square factors, it has to stay under the radical. So 2 square root of 6 would be our simplified radical. So let's simplify each square root. Now I'm going to show you um, the way that I think is the easiest to simplify a square root. I know that some people like to do factor trees, but I think that they get messy and confusing. So what I like to do is list out all of the perfect squares, like I've just done here. Now, when we look at, or when we're trying to simplify a radical, like the square root of 20, what we first need to do is take half of that number. So half of 20 is 10. So then I look at my perfect squares over here, and 10 would fall right here between 9 and 16. So that's where I start, and I go smaller to find the biggest perfect square that will go into that number, or that will divide into that number. So if I start here, I look at 9 first. 9 won't divide into 20. But what about 4? Four will, so that's the biggest perfect square that will divide into 20. Four times five is 20. Now, since four is a perfect square, we can take the square root of four, which is two. So that gets to come on the outside of the radical and the five stays under. And that's my simplified radical. For number two, 45. Like I said, take half of the number Half of 45 would be 22 and a half. Okay, so that would fall right here between 16 and 25. All right, so um, if I look at 16, will 16 divide into 45? No. What about nine? Yes, nine will divide into 45. So that's the biggest perfect square that will go into 45. Nine times five is 45. Since 9 is the perfect square, it, it gets to come out. The square root of 9 is 3, and the 5 stays under. For number 3, half of 48 would be 24. Okay, so that would be right here. So the next number is 16. Will 16 go into 48? Yes, it will. 16 times 3 is 48. The square root of 16 is 4, and the 3 stays under. All right, for number 4, half of 27, that would be 13 and a half. Okay, so that would be right here. So the next number is 9. Will 9 go into 27? Yes. Okay, so let me rewrite this, and 27 is the same as 9 times 3. Okay, so the nine gets to come out of the radical as a three and the three stays under. But we have this four that's already outside. So if there's a, no, a number that's already on the outside of the radical 
we're going to multiply it times the number that we bring out of the radical. So that's 4 times 3, which is 12. Oops. And the 3 is under the radical. So 12 square root 3 would be our solution. For number 5, we have negative square root of 99. Can we do that? Yes, because the negative is not under the radical. As long as it's on the outside, um, it's not, it doesn't affect us. So the negative, we're just going to bring it down. Okay, and then for the square root of 99, that's close to 50, so we'll start right here. All right, will 49 go into 99? No. What about 36? Nope. 25? Mm-mm. 16? Nope. 9. Yes, 9 times 11 is 99. And so we have that negative on the outside. The 9 comes out as a 3, and the 11 stays under the radical. All right, for number 6, since this is a fraction under a radical, I'm going to split this up and deal with each part separately. Okay, so 16 is a perfect square. Redraw that. And so the whole 16 gets to come out of the radical as a 4. But 72 is not a perfect square. What's half of 72? 36. And 36 is a perfect square. So 36 times 2 is 72. I'm having trouble writing today. Okay, let me rewrite that, make it a little neater. Okay, 36 times 2. So the 36 comes out as a 6, and the 2 stays under. And then we have a 4 in the denominator. Now, um, we want to reduce fractions whenever we can, and we can only reduce numbers that are um, outside of the radical. Like I can't reduce this 4 and this 2 because that's not actually a 2. That's the square root of 2, which is not the same. So these numbers can be reduced. So I want to reduce that. Um, 6 over 4 would reduce to 3 over 2. So it would be 3 square root of 2 over 2. And that would be my answer. Now let's simplify cube roots. Okay, so for cube root, let's just try to determine what is the biggest perfect cube that will divide into that number. So let's think about our perfect cube numbers. I know that eight is a perfect cube and eight will divide into 40. All right, so the cube root of eight times 5 um, is the same as the cube root of 40. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So the 2 comes on the outside, and the 5 stays under the radical. All right, for the cube root of 16, well, it's the same as before. 8 will divide into 16, and 8 is a perfect cube. So 8 times 2 is 16. The cube root of 8 is 2, so 2 comes on the outside, and 2 stays under the radical. For number 3, just like we've done before, let's um, separate this into two separate radicals. Alright, and 343 is a perfect cube. The cube root of 343 is 7, so we just have a 7 on the bottom. And then the cube root of 2, of course, there are no numbers that can divide into 2, or we can't, there's no number that we can multiply times itself 3 times to get 2. So that's already simplified. So our simplified radical would be cube root of 2 over 7. 
make sure you don't bring that down to the 7 because it's out of the radical. All right, let's simplify roots of variables. Okay, so for um, just like we did before when we were dividing our exponent by the index of our root, that's what we're going to do here, but these are not perfect cubes. So let's let me show you how we deal with those. This is the cube, the square root of x cubed. So this is my, my exponent is a 3, and we're going to divide it by the index of the root, which remember, if we don't see a number there, it's understood to be the square root, which would be like a 2. So we're going to take our exponent of 3 and divide it by 2. Well, 2 will go into 3 one whole time with 1 left over. So however many times it will, will go into that number, that's how many gets to come out of the radical. And then the remainder is how many remain under the radical. So 1x comes on the outside of the radical, and 1x remains under the radical. For number 2, the square root of 9, the big number 9, is 3. So 3 gets to come on the outside. And then for, for our x to the ninth power, we're going to take the number 9 and divide it by 2. Well, 2 will go into 9 4 whole times. 4 times 2 is 8. And there's 1 left over. So 4 come out and one remains. All right, so four come out, so that would be x to the fourth that comes out. Yeah. x to the fourth comes out, and then one x remains under the radical. For number 3, 18 is not a perfect square, so we're going to have to simplify that. What's the biggest perfect square that will divide into 18? 9. Okay, so 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2. Alright, so the 9 comes out as a 3, and the 2 stays under the radical. Okay, so for our x to the fifth, we're going to take 5 and divide it by 2. 2 will go into 5 2 times with 1 left over. So 2 x's come on the outside, and 1 x stays under the radical. Now for the y, it's an understood 1. So we know that 2 cannot go into 1. So um, that, that's how many remains under the radical. All right, so this is our answer. For number four, let's separate this into two separate radicals. All right, the 12 is not a perfect square. But the biggest perfect square that will divide into 12 is what? 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Now for our x to the 6th power, if I take 6 and divide it by 2, 2 will go into 6 3 whole times with none left over. Let me see if I can go down a little bit more. Okay, there's none left over. So three whole x's come out of the radical. There's none left under the radical. All right, then for the four, the square root of four is two. Three stays under, and that's over x to the third. For number 
5. This time we're doing the cube root, so we're going to be dividing by 3. All right, so 5 divided by 3. 3 will go into 5 one time, and there's 2 left over. So 1x comes on the outside, and 2 stay under the radical. And then for number six, we're taking the cube root of each part. The cube root of eight is two. It's a perfect cube. All right, the cube root of x cubed, three divided by three is one, so one whole x comes on the outside. The cube root of y to the eighth, eight divided by three. Three will go into eight two times with two left over. So two y's on the outside and two y's under the radical. And there's only one z, so we can't divide one by three, so it stays where it is. And that's my answer. And that's how we deal with simplifying our radicals.